The bill's author is joining us now to talk more about it, Senator Terry Bonoff. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Julie, for having me. My first question for you is you're quoted in March 18th's Min Post stating, this is mainstream reform policy. What did you mean? This is not some crazy thing that Minnesota is trying to do. If you look at it, 35 states right now have, for example, Teach for America in their schools. So we would be joining 35 other states. If you look at the Race to the Top application, Secretary Duncan had one of the criteria, in fact, a criteria worth 21 points, saying that you should have an alternative licensure program that isn't an exception waiver-based program. We do catch up with Tom Dewar from Education Minnesota in a bit, and he essentially states that if there's any reform, it should be based off of methodology that has been proven to work. Given that 35 other states do impl implement something similar to this, would you say this is methodology that works? Yes, I would. And actually, almost all of the states do have some form of alternative licensure. The 35 states were only the 35 states that use Teach for America in their schools. Teach for America, and by the way, I am quite passionate about that program. This program reminds me of the Peace Corps or when I was growing up, Teen Corps. It's a program that takes our best and brightest students from schools all over the country that maybe weren't thinking when they started or weren't even thinking halfway through, gee, I'd like to be a teacher, I'd like to be in schools. But yet, they've completed their education, they understand that we have significant challenges currently in our country. We have areas of poverty where there is such a strong difference between those haves and have-nots when you look at how many graduate from high school, when you look at academic success and opportunity for achievement in their future, these young people say they want to do something about that. Teach for America is all about that. Teach for America is about taking those young people, training them with intensive, rigorous, rigorous training, and then putting them in our toughest environments and saying, you better make a difference. Let's so, talk about that training for a bit because critics do argue that since it isn't the same, it's, it's, some would say it's comparable to what a, a traditional license would entail and some say that it lowers the bar. Yeah, one of the things that I've been most disappointed is that statement that we would lower our standards for teachers because I would not want to lower our standards. The other thing I would like to say is that this is not an anti-teacher or an, even an anti-union. You bring up Tom Doerr, who's president of Education Minnesota. This is not about Education Minnesota or our teachers, who I have the most respect for. This is simply adding an additional tool to all that we have to combat this very troubling, troubling situation we have. So with regard to the rigorous standards, this bill says that you would have, as a minimum, a 200-hour intensive experience, training experience, and again, let's, for the sake of argument, use the Teach for America example, because that is what I've been most focused on, is creating a, a pathway for that program to be robust in Minnesota. So using their approach, the 200 hours, they take these you know, competitively placed young people, if they were going to be in Minnesota schools, they would, early July, go to the south side of Chicago, and they would be student teaching in a summer school program for five weeks. If you're in school, let's say in a regular college program, and you take a semester, oftentimes that university will offer the same program, but in a shortened summer session. We all know, any of us who have taken those classes, that is even harder because it is so time, you know, compressed and intense. So these young people are now in the south side of Chicago in very tough schools doing their student teaching. They finish their student teaching during the day and they go back and they have to do class warm, classroom experience, reading, you know, talking in small groups, learning all sorts of different things about what it is to be a teacher, learning pedagogy. Then in the evening they have dinner, they go back and do more classroom work. In essence, for that, those five weeks they are working around the clock. After that they come back to Minnesota where we, in this case, partner with Hamlin University and they have more classroom work. 
the end of which they take tests in the subject areas that they're going to teach and they have to pass those tests. In fact, currently, the way our laws are structured, new teachers have the whole probationary period in which to pass their tests. In this program, that's not the case. They have to pass those tests before they even enter a classroom. And so, Senator Bonoff, we're almost time, but I, I wanted to ask for, for argument's sake, as we said, Education Minnesota does oppose this bill, but it mm -hmm. does concur that some reform is needed. And they've put out a series of reform initiatives, including smaller class sizes. Is there a wiggle room here for some kind of compromise between their reform packages and, and this bill? I think you'd have to ask them. I've and had, I did, and they'll okay, hear that in a moment. I've had five different meetings now with Education Minnesota, reaching out to Education Minnesota saying, can, us, can we please come to some understanding. Can we find a compromise? I had suggested because some were concerned that this was too broad, that we were opening the door to programs that might not be as rigorous. So I had suggested, okay, let's narrow it. Let's say only Teach for America and mid-career professionals who would be hired to staff either hard to staff subject areas or hard to staff geographic areas. And in addition, Teach for America would only be allowed to go into areas of concentrations of poverty and places where there is an achievement gap. I'd be willing to narrow the bill to those two areas. With regard to the class size, we all want small class sizes. That would not be good for Minnesota to put that into law. We would hate to be in a situation like Florida where they actually did that. They said you had to have 18 people in a class, now they're virtually bankrupt because they cannot afford their educational system because of how many teachers they have to hire to accommodate that law. Senator Bonoff, we're out of time. This is in the Omnibus Education Bill, correct? We certainly hope so. Okay, well we'll track it and thank you so much for your time. Thank you.